go. So, first apologies to our LGBT friends. This is mostly for straight people, but I think there is some useful stuff for you in here, but you may have to figure it out for yourself. So I'll be saying things like women do this, men do that. We all know human behavior is not 100%, so you'll have to fill in the uh, mostlys and usuallys for yourself. It's gonna sound sexist, because we're talking about sex. Um, it's not, it's, but remember, we try to treat men and women the same at work and at school. When you talk about mating, they are different, and it's okay to talk about that. In fact, you have to talk about it. So um, we're gonna talk about some biological differences. Okay, so most people go through three stages of this process. There's the exploration stage, there on the left. That's like a rave. Then there's the middle stage, the searching stage or wooing stage. And then on the right is our long-term partnership. Uh, I've labeled the, the one on the left and the right fun and joy. Fun is great. Fun is what you can get with a short-term investment. Joy is different. Joy requires a longer-term investment. And the reason I have wooing on there is it turns out that especially for men, sometimes they go instantaneously from exploration to identifying a specific individual they must have. And this can happen instantly, um, including even if they don't know her name. And you laugh, but it's, but it's think about ladies, aren't, don't you feel sorry for men that this happens to them? It can be totally inappropriate, right? But so just be glad this doesn't happen to us as much. Okay, so how long is a long-term relationship? Well, to me, 20, 25 years is pretty good. That's not a lifetime. It means you might have more than one of these in your life. I'm on my second one now. So um, that's how come I had to research this. I had to do it again. But when we think about this, remember, your, your biochemistry is the same as it was, mostly the same as it was thousands of years ago. So that's why some of this stuff sounds kind of old-fashioned. We live in old-fashioned bodies. You can't get a different body right now. You're, we're all stuck with the bodies we have. So we just have to deal with it, right? I mean, largely, a lot of this stuff sounds like kind of caveman stuff. Now, one big exception is hormonal birth control. Ladies, if you use any kind of hormonal birth control, you are mucking with these systems in a major way, including the type of men you prefer. Uh, hopefully you all know this, but some of you may not. If you're using hormonal birth control, it pushes you away from liking the traditional super masculine man. So the scary thing about this is when you change birth control methods. If you change birth control methods, suddenly the man who you thought was so attractive may have married, may have had kids with, doesn't seem as good anymore. So what that means is, ladies, it's a really good idea to try to fix, find a birth control method and stick with it that's something you'll be able to go for, use for decades. And gentlemen, this is a big issue for you. What happens if the lady you're with changes? You could be in, it could be a big problem. So just be aware of that as you launch into this. So you may have heard of hypergamy. Usually they talk about female hypergamy. That means women like to marry up. They like to marry men who have more resources, they have more power, uh, higher social status. But of course, men, like to marry up as well. There's nothing, nothing unusual about wanting to marry up. We all want to marry up in some, in some way. And men go for youth. Men of any age, they did, they've, they've done studies of this. It doesn't matter how old the men are. They all like the same age range in their women, visually. And they're very visually oriented. They like the young 20s. That's the, that's, they all go for that age range. And no matter how old, the, you know, I, as when I was in my 30s, my 40s, I thought, well, men my age should like women my age. Forget it, ladies. That's not how it works. And I used to be annoyed about it. There's no point in that, right? You don't need to be annoyed about it. This is, this is not something they've chosen. They're just programmed for it. Just as we ladies are programmed for looking, liking men who have more money. There's nothing to be, you know, proud about that, right? So. All these preferences for women who want men with more resources, men who want women who are young, these made, these were vital in earlier times, right? In the olden days, the women couldn't, didn't work outside the home. They couldn't bring in a lot of resources. They needed someone. These women were burdened down with continual pregnancies, continual infants, continual nursing. They needed those resources. And the men, why optimize for youth? Well, that's how you reduce the likelihood that this woman is gonna die in childbirth. 
they died all the time in childbirth, mostly from blood loss. So it was necessary, even for her own benefit, to get through this process as young as possible in her early 20s when she's at her strongest. Of course, things are different now. So what it means is if you're in your search process, if you can try to damp down these natural urges that you have, ladies for money and status, men for youth, if you can try to, try to compensate for that with your intellect, you'll have a much wider choice. So problems with doing your search offline. This conference is fabulous. There are wonderful people here. In theory, you could find the perfect person here. This is a very high quality crowd. There's a problem though. The, a lot of these people are already taken, right? They're, they're either they're already matched up or they're just out of a breakup and they're not looking or they're gay or they have some sexual orientation that isn't quite yours um, or for whatever reason, they look available and they're not. And you, it's very hard to find out quickly. You can't just walk up to them and go, so are you available? Are you single? Are you, not, are you of my sexual orientation? Uh, do you want kids or no kids? You can't do that, right? So it looks like a great opportunity and you might find somebody here. By all means, give it a shot. But it's not the way to bet. If you want to shorten your search, move through this process quickly. I think online is the way to go. That's where the big numbers are. You can go through thousands of people that way much faster. And you can sort by goal, right? Someone can be perfect for you, but unless the goals are the same, especially when it comes to kids, the big one, right? I mean, I've seen couples, they, they're together for years. They get along great. They don't agree on the kid thing. Disaster, right? So why not? Use computers for this. Computers are great for these kinds of simple matches, right? If you know that you do or don't want marriage, you do or don't want kids, take advantage of that. Um, and be sure to choose a service that makes the sorting automatic on the fields that matter to you. Um, I tried OkCupid back when I was using this. The most serious thing you can ask for on OkCupid is long-term dating. To me, long-term dating sounds like a version of hell. Right? The whole goal is to stop dating, right? You don't want to have to go out all the time with strangers. So, um, so pick a, now, okay, Cupid is fine if it fits your goal set, that's great. But for what I was looking for, you just, there was, you could put it in the text fields, but you can't sort on that, right? Find a service where you can sort on what you care about, right? Um, that's what computers are good for. Okay, so I had a long list. You may have a long list of things you really want. Um, you know, it's not really about money and power, is it? It's about, you know, someone you have to live with for 20 or 30 years or more, right? So if you look at this list, it looks really long, but then try to imagine what would it be like if I didn't have this, right? Um, you know, honest, what if, he, what, if it, what if your partner wasn't honest? So even though it's a long list, I really feel that it is, it's vital. These are the things you really need to have. So many dating services match you, they seem to match you based on things like your taste in music or your detailed political views or your hobbies. None of those things are critical, right? These things are what make a difference on whether you can stand to live with someone for 20 or even raise kids with them for 20 or 25 years. Um, uh, at, at one of the other bills, a young man came up and said, well, he was looking for somebody who was really into steampunk and something else, and these were both sort of usually masculine things. And then by the end of the conversation, we agreed, okay, it would be all right if, if she were to say, honey, have a great time at your event, and I'll see you after. It would, and she was there to greet him. So we agreed, avo you know, avocations and hobbies are not necessary to share. So how do you get through the search as fast as possible? Um, I would suggest date non-exclusively, in other words, date in parallel, and have both parties understand that. You know, just, just mention it up front. Um, call it a date, don't just say we're hanging out. You need to, both parties need to know this isn't just about exploring a friendship, you know, we're talking about a potential romantic relationship here. And it builds, um, and, and having this, calling it a date, having it be non-exclusive, helps build that sexual tension, which you need to have. You want that tension uh, in this process. You need to meet, off, you've heard it before, and I'm gonna say it again and be very clear about why. You need to meet in person as soon as you possibly can. And the reason is that it turns out we can actually smell whether we're a good match. 
Um, it's our immune systems have to be a certain uh, have to be a certain match or distance apart. So, you know, it does. It, don't waste your time doing a lot of phone and email. You know, you just you just have to meet. So, hookup culture. Um, fortunately, I found my second match before Tinder came out. So. Uh, Tinder supposedly has changed and, and led people deeper into hookup culture. I think there's, an, there's a problem there for long-term relationships. It's, it works for short-term, but for long-term, if sex happens too soon, she gets a lot of oxytocin. She starts to feel committed. Sounds great, right? But he's not getting the dopamine that he needs to make that tight bond. So. We've seen it again and again, right? She, she wants more commitment, she wants it, and he's, he's not feeling it. It's not, it's not working for him. This happens all the time. And I think this is, this is a side effect of the chemical, the chemical changes that happen when sex happens too soon. Um, you'll see, uh, you know, there's the, the third date rule. People say the date, sex should happen by the third date. I've also seen a sixth date rule. That's nonsense for long-term relationships. Um, Physical attraction on the woman's side, I'm saying on the woman's side, can take time, definitely can take time. So she may feel, oh, he's a nice guy, yeah, we're dating, but he's nothing special. And instantaneously that can change to, oh my God, he's, he's, I have to be with him every minute, he's the best. So there's, human beings vary a lot, there's no third or sixth date rule that makes any sense. Women can take longer. I think. When I was dating, I would get advice, always from men, saying, you should feel a physical attraction on the first date. Apparently, that's good advice for a man. It was, it's lousy advice, really bad advice for women. Because that means um, the, the sooner, ladies, the sooner you're attracted to him, the more likely he is to be a bad boy. Why is that? It's because, by, it's because that physical attraction has led him to have an awful lot of attention from women, which has led him to develop some bad habits. So actually, when they say, give the nice guys a chance, ladies, that's the message, which is keep dating the ones who you think, gosh, I wish I could be attracted to this man. You probably have been through this. He's a nice guy, but you're not feeling it. Keep trying. It can come. Do not live together unless you're both sure this is it. Um, I use the, the engagement ring as a symbol. Of course, not everyone is after marriage, um, and there are marriage alternatives that can work. We might get into that in the discussion. Um, but don't move in together. Be why? Because moving is a hassle, and if you move in together, then it's gonna be a hassle to split up even when you should. And things can drag on for years, so never move in together to save money. That's a bad idea. That's not the way to go. Move in with a, with a platonic friend. So. We wanted to make this a group discussion. I want you to think about, do you want a life partner? Where are you in those stages? There's exploration, there's the search or the wooing, and then there's the, the partnership. Are you happy with the stage you're in and how it's going? Positive experiences you've had, negative experiences? Do you agree with the advice I've given? You may disagree, I'd love to hear that. Your own personal advice. So, below is the link. For the, I've just finished a book. Um, I've decided, I finished the book for women and I've decided now I have to write one for men because I've been reading books for men and they're not very good, so in my view. Uh, so if you want to get the free book, just put your email address down at that, uh, at that web link. Right after our discussion here, we're gonna walk over to the round table discussion room right over there and continue our discussion. So if you don't get to talk, and you have some stuff to say or have questions, just walk with the group over to the, over to the room, the round table discussion room, and we'll continue. Um, I do this, you know, I give out discussions and advice free here at Bill, I do it at Ephemeral, and at the auction tomorrow, if you want to get into this really heavily with me, I'm, I, I, I put up for auction some coaching sessions. So if you're in your search and you really want to get serious about it, um, you can bid on that. So. If we can pass around the mic, I would love to hear your comments. It's fine, even if you want to disagree, it's okay. Now, is anybody brave? Does somebody want to talk? She's the sign person. Does any, here we have a comment, all right. Hi, uh, 
Okay, that's very sad. I'm sorry to hear you're having that problem. Um, I think it's just something to keep in mind. Well, the services are very different. And for me, um, I knew I wanted a long-term relationship. So OkCupid just didn't make that much sense. You can't even ask for one on there automatically. So that didn't even make sense. I had the best luck, given my goals, I had the best luck on eHarmony because that's for super serious people. It's, it used to be a religious service. It is not that way anymore. So um, that's just, but it's very long-term oriented. So it's possible you might be treated better there. I certainly hope so. Yes. I wanted to uh, challenge a little bit of the attraction bad boy thing that oh. you mentioned. Because, um, yeah, I don't agree with that at all. I find that I'm attracted to, uh, I would say heterosexual, I'm very attracted to intelligence and brilliance, mm. right? It has nothing to do with masculinity. Oh, I totally agree. That is my thing, too. And so, um, and you can get in just as much trouble that way. But <laughs> as you know, but here's the thing. You can have intelligent bad boys, too. You know, it's not, that, it's not just you have hyper-masculine ones. You can have genius ones. And, and some of them really behave very badly. So, yeah, yeah. So I 100% agree with you. They're also really good at justifying what they've done. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Any, anybody else have comments? Anybody brave enough to talk in front of the group? Let's hear from a, okay. Can we do the, let's, let's do the man and then we'll go to Heather. How come there isn't more being made about the hormonal birth control issue? It seems like a huge problem. It's a totally huge problem and I don't know why this is not being discussed more. It's a, it's a I mean, Here's, there's two issues. One is it could potentially totally screw up your romantic relationship. And the other is I think there may be other health issues related to hormonal birth control that haven't been really addressed. So um, I don't know why, but we should really all challenge our doctors on this issue. Heather? Well, I just wanted to go a little bit deeper on this like, bad boy attraction thing. Because <laughs> I don't know, I think I, I don't think I understood exactly what you said. Like, and, are you saying that, as a woman, if you're attracted to a guy immediately, the guy has the experience of lots of women being attracted to him, so he behaves differently because of that feedback? He, he may, yes, he may have picked up bad habits that way. And it's not his fault, right? He's what not... Mean, what do you mean by bad habits? I mean, I guess I'm like taking what advantage, do you mean by bad taking habits? advantage of women. We need you to use the mic now. Everybody has to use the mic. I would like to challenge that, Dr. Will. Okay. <laughs> As a bad boy, I'd like to challenge that. Far from it. Far from it. I was it. a virgin until 24, and I had to really pick up my scissors to know how to handle women because in my culture it was prohibited to touch them except with a flower. Okay. And my first pick up my scissors, as I read, taught you that you need to have at least like, I don't know, 20 girlfriends before you know how to hold down properly onto the one. I see. So, no, to treat them properly as a man and to give them what they want. And not be a wuss and so on. So I would challenge that. I mean, you might simply gain experience as a very allergic and a wonderful partner. <laughs> not one of them. Uh, I would say that I've actually found the other side of that, which is like, what as a man, you meet a woman who's extremely beautiful and she's used to this kind all the time, but she's also, throughout her life, I uh, feel, you know, no offense to the beautiful woman here, but uh, often they've, they've had too much given to them and too much strength. They haven't had to struggle as much. They don't end up being as interesting or, you know, have something really to offer more than just physicality. Uh, is that kind of what you're Absolutely. About? You can see it's the exact same problem, which is this whether it's, a, whether it's a, a certain type of man or a certain type of woman, they've gotten a huge amount of attention with no effort, and they've been swamped with interest 
for, for many years. And so both of them may have picked up bad habits and not learned how do you treat other people properly. I think that's true. And Christine, if I could perhaps help to clarify, Please. I believe what I'm hearing you also saying is that these are tendencies, these are warning signs, yes. these are things to look deeper into. Absolutely. It's not necessarily a blanket statement that every guy you're attracted to quickly is going to be an asshole. No, although it seems amazingly often in my case. <laughs> I do much better with the ones where it takes longer. Okay, I think it, I'm, time is up. We are, as a nice guy, I want to personally thank you and everyone else. Christy Peterson. Okay, um, anybody who didn't get to talk or wants to continue, come follow me over to the roundtable discussion and, uh, and be sure and ask for the free book. Thank you.